Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We are out here in the beautiful state of Utah, and you've been asking us to cover some gasless flux core, so that's exactly what we're doing. We're out at Steel Tech Academy, and we're gonna do heavy plate, doing heavy wire, showing you how it's done without gas. Let's go see how the professionals do it. We're here at Steel Tech Academy where they train all their workers here for BZI in a bunch of different places, am I correct? Correct. When we were outside, we saw it's not just regular welding training, you also get to do rigging and forklift training, all kinds correct. of different stuff. So what kind of stuff do you all train people for here at the Academy? Well, the cool thing about BZI, they genuinely want to bring value to their people. So they've set up this amazing facility to bring all the training in. So we're gonna go through an OSHA 10, we can go through an OSHA 30, CPR first aid, MEWP training, forklift training. So they get the qualifications in that. They can go out on the structure, steel erection, bolting, welding. There's really no end to the spectrum of things they'll allow us to do if it brings value to the team members, not only in the field, not only in the office, but in their life as a whole. That's what BZI is about. Well, and one of the processes that we were told about that y'all do a lot is gasless flux core. And we have people in our comments always asking for gasless flux core, so you're gonna show me how to do it today. Absolutely, I'd love to show you. So yeah, using the FCAW-S, self-shielded flux core arc welding, it's an arc welding process, and it looks like MIG, but it's not the same. So you're gonna run straight polarity when you reverse the leads and you take your negative and connect it to your electrode and you take your positive and as your ground to your work surface, that's actually straight polarity. So we run that in DCEN, direct current electrode negative. Let's check it out, see what you got it on. Absolutely, into. let's do that. All right, so this is the setup that we're using today for the gasless flux core. Can you tell me a little bit about this whole setup? So what you have is a power source and traditionally something like this would be on the ground on a job site for steel erection. You'd run cables and leads up high up to wherever you're working, get up in your boom, and you take the feeder box with you. Mm -hmm. That's the traditional setup. Um, at BZI, the boom has the leads built into it, and we just connect this to the power source at the top of the boom, and up we go. You also have what you call a wire feeder box. You take this up in the air, and this is what you weld with. This seems like some pretty thick wire. What kind of parameters are you running there? Oh, okay, so this wire is, an, is uh, NR233. Okay. Uh, 062 diameter, or 1 16th. You're gonna run this wire without gas, obviously, so it's self-shielded. So it looks a lot like a MIG setup or a dual shield setup, but obviously you don't have the cone. Today, we're doing a 3G one inch unlimited coupon test. As you can see down here for the settings, that's a 20.5. So 20.5 volts is what we're gonna be running at. And we've got a wire feed speed that's roughly between 210, 235, somewhere in that range. But this is a constant voltage process. You're keeping voltage as constant as you can because the fluctuation in, in, in that voltage can create inductance, it can create nitrogen produced in the weld and you can get porosity if you weld passes out and then it's a pain in the butt. So otherwise a fantastic process, very functional, very efficient and very, very effective. Well, let's dive into that root pass. You bet, let's get on. So this is it. A 3G, huh? How many passes are you gonna put in this? Well, roughly with this wire, it's probably gonna be about 15 to 18 passes. You could do this in a single root. You could do it in two stringer beads. You could just, we'll say oscillate, not necessarily weave, but oscillate a little tight into both ends of the bottom of the root, and then you'll start stringer beading it out. And I see you set yourself up with a little, 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 brace, little bar huh? here. So why, why do you have that? So in these type of conditions, there's two things I like to do. One, get comfortable. And two, I'm gonna do dry runs. I want to make sure I'm comfortable so I haven't wasted any metal and have to fix it. We're not going to do this all in one pass today. We've, we've already got this one. We're going to demonstrate the route. We've got a little bit of a fill in here that we can show extra fill passes. And then finally, we got our cap here just to kind of speed the process up. Awesome. Yeah, there's not much difference between those once you get going. The route pass, the first two hot passes after that have a little bit of deviation in your work angle. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's just stringer beads move from one side to the other, tie it all in and bring it together. Okay, well, let's see the magic happen. All man. right, my friend, thank you. Thank you. If you want to become the best version of the welder you can become, the lesson that I've learned over 30 years of welding is slow down to the point at which you don't make any mistakes. Okay? You find that speed where you're not having to go back and fix it, you're going to be way more efficient and effective. As I'm welding, I want to tie into the bottom of this scoop on both sides. And I'm not really weaving, I'm just kind of walking it in. Staying at the edge of that puddle, the flag's behind me. 
The stick out looks good. Travel angle looks good. Work angle looks good. Speed looks good. Getting up to the top of the coupon here now. I'm going to get to these runoff tabs. And I'm going to run this stick out just a little bit longer so it cools it down. It's the opposite of stick. More stick out gets cold, closer stick out gets hot. And I'm going to run this thing all the way to the top. You can hear it changing that sizzling sound. Cap it off, cap it off, cap it off, stop. All right, so now when I ran that pass, I was talking to myself saying, hey, how's my stick out? How's my travel speed? How's my work angle? How's my travel angle? My stick out's roughly going to be three quarters to an inch. I can run perpendicular, slightly uphill if I want, but this mostly is a drag angle type of process. So this rod is for drag angle. But I can run all three, you just got to pay attention to where you are in that puddle, your stick out's correct, and you're blending into what you want to be blending into. The other thing that you need to understand about flux core arc welding, um, it's a clean as you go process. This slag, once it solidifies, will not reliquify. You cannot leave any of it in there. I'm going to do a weld, I'm going to do a quick wipe, I'm going to do a little bit of a chip, get this piece out of there. I drag this side of the hammer. That's what it's for, and I leave my point sharp, just in case I need it for something tiny. I don't drag this end of the hammer. After I weld, wipe, chip, I'm just gonna throw that out like that. Now what I wanna do is get my heat pen out. Out in the field, this isn't gonna be a problem, but when you're testing, guys, this is super important. There's nowhere for this heat to go. It cannot dissipate anywhere. Once this coupon fills and reaches 400 degrees, all of the bets are off. It could blow a hole right through this. So just a quick check on the furthest point of the material. Just barely, right there. If I see wet and smoke, wet and smoke, I won't even wire wheel it, it'll just warp it over. Okay, so I've welded, I've wiped, I've checked with my heat pin. I'm gonna wire wheel out everything in there. I'm gonna keep everything clean, welderberries off, and now we'll move on to our, to our hot pass fills. All right, so here's what's happening now. We've got a root pass in, I've got a couple fill passes, and I'm gonna fill this up a couple more to show you. These are now stringer bead. They're gonna be, I'm gonna pick a side. My work angle changes, and I'm gonna stringer bead on one side of that toe. Then I'm gonna clean it off, and I'm gonna stringer bead another side. So let's do this. Now I'm gonna wait till I'm on top of that puddle. Stick out to about an inch, three quarter. Get up here with the cab then. And I just chase that puddle all the way up. Right on the edge of that puddle. Right on that toe, work angles at the right angle to tie in to the bevel. And stay right on that puddle so I don't carve it out. Ride the edge of that puddle. Get up here to where the tabs are again. I'm gonna stick out a little long again. There's all the heat's at the top now. Open that up a little bit. Doesn't matter what happens up here. Fill these up, all the way to the top, all the way. Get that filled off, filled off, and stop. I'm gonna bust that, and I get in a pattern of everything I do. Weld, wipe, chip it. Okay, I'm not too hot. Now I'm gonna wire wheel. It's all clean. Quick inspection, make sure there's nothing in there. So now I'm gonna take the second one, and now I don't have to change my work angle. All I have to do now, all the way out, is just move over to the side I want to be on, stringer bead, tie into the bevel, let the other weld touch the other weld, and run it up. Here we go. Let's send it. There's two. Now it's too hot. You're just gonna waste material, smear things into the weld, and it'll start blowing holes. That's when I take that, and now I just move to overhead and stay efficient and working. Stay in a rhythm. Because a lot of the times when you're taking this test, you're taking both to qualify. Yeah, and, and that's a smart thing to do. In order to, to be qualified in all positions up to 24 inch round pipe and all that, you do the one inch and limited in a 3G and a 4G, and now you're covered in all of those gamuts. That's why we don't just do a one or a two or a three. G or F position, the G, 3, and a 4G cover all of those 
they cover all the F positions, and therefore when you get out into the field, you can be efficient and effective because you're not limited. So we're starting to fill it up. We'll get it, we'll get it filled out further to the point at which you want to stop to cap. It's important to understand that by AWS code, there's a certain amount of extra reinforcement that you're allowed to have above this piece of metal. It's not supposed to exceed an eighth in this one inch limit. So now I'm gonna get it to the point at which it's slightly lower, and when I cap it, it should stay within flush, or flat, I'm sorry, to out to an eighth. And as long as I stay in that range, I'm good. So again, dry run real quick. I'm gonna tie on this side first. Straight on work angle, travel angle the way I like, and I'm gonna ride the edge of that bevel, not on it, just inside on the weld emit, on the weld metal, and let it land on top of this side. Comfort, I like it, let's do this. I can see it melting that edge away, so I know I'm landing it. I don't care about the left side, I only care about the right. Ride that puddle, nice and smooth, the slag's dragging behind. I can see it moving, speed's good, my stick out's good, travel angle's good, work angle's good. Get up here to the top of the tabs off, make sure these corners are full, all the way up. All the way out of here. Boom. Done. One side. In case you hadn't noticed, this is a very wet, wet process. You can try and do figure eights and snake belt. You do all that stuff. It does not stack dimes. It does, just doesn't do that. All right. So what I did here is I did one side, capped it off the edge, capped off this edge. And now I'm going to run another bead right down the middle. I don't do craziness with my grinder like this. I can't afford scratching something else. Let the wheel do the work. I've opened this up and just V'd it just tiny so I can throw that pass through there. It's like its own little V-groove and it'll cap that center for me. There's a real good chance this is low right here. That's okay. I got tons of metal in there I can fill it with. If I'm a professional, I'm going to throw this pass in, get my VWAC gauge out and check that. If that pass is low, I'm not going to do no little patch thing right here. It isn't going to take much time to just grind that down a little bit, throw that pass in again, and it's going to look professional. A few seconds, no little patchwork, looks amazing. So let's give it a go. All right, so you did some work, that's for sure. Yeah. So looking at these different passes, like mm -hmm. what, do, what do you think? What are, what are some takeaways? What we had here, obviously we had just a root pass. We got this all tied into both sides. Then we're gonna stringer bead on out, pick on the side, and that's what it kind of looks like as you're filling it up. Then you're gonna get over to here and you're gonna cap. And what you notice about this, except for the root, this, this wire doesn't lay down. Like If you were a welder with stick, Okay, your SMAW, your MIG, you're looking at this, your TIG, especially TIG, I did 10 years of that. You're like, God, that's ugly. This, it's <laughs> not a, this weld is structural. You can make it semi-pretty, but it's super wet. It's not meant to look like stacked dimes. It yeah. just doesn't do that. So as we filled out root, we're starting to fill it up. We get out to the cap. This would have been from the first pass to the last pass, about 18 passes with this 062 wire. Dang. Me personally, as I cap this, if I ever have anything, so if I get my gauge out and I look at this and check it as a professional, I clean it off completely. Me personally, I'm just real quick, gonna take maybe a minute and I'll grind this pass back out full mm -hmm. way. I'm not just gonna do a little patchwork. One minute of work, grind it out, re-throw that cap in and she's gorgeous, it's worth the time. But this is a sound weldment within the eighth inch of reinforcement and not dipping below. And now I have a sound piece of metal. I've taken two on a groove weld and turned them into one. And so this is the flux core 
arc welding self-shielded process. So we learned this is a very hot, wet process, and if you try to go too fast without letting it cool down, you're gonna have a bad time. I really appreciate you teaching us and having us out here at the wonderful Steel Tech Academy. If you wanna learn more about everything you saw here and learn more about Steel Tech, check it out in the description down below. And it's again, thank you for teaching me, my friend. Happy to do it. Thanks for being here. We'll see you on the next web.